Uh, everyone, this is Juicy here, coming back to you guys with another video. Um, I guess I want to discuss about Ethereum proof of stake. The reason why I want to go over it is because um, it's pretty much the only thing that I'm looking forward to. Um, they've been there's been a set date of September 19th for the for the merge, um, and I want to go over it just because I don't really see anything else in the news that I'm looking forward to or that will you know help increase the price of Ethereum. Now, a couple days ago, they've already set a date of September 19th. So the Ethereum developers are very confident for the merge to happen September 19th. Now, they've already done multiple tests of the merge. So as you can see here, here are the current test nets, Kovan, Ripley, Robson, Gorley, and Sepolia. Um, from my understanding, it seems like things have already been done. It seems like half of them or majority of the test nets is already currently uh, being performed. And it looks like Gorley and Sepolia will be the two that will be supported in long term after the merge. Now, I think the best information you're going to get about proof of stake or what it is, is on the Ethereum website, which is ethereum.org. Um, I'll put this in the descriptions, but I want to get an overview and my advice, my opinions on it, um, because I do think it's very important. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen the price of Ethereum. Um, the price of Ethereum has increased by 50% compared within the past two weeks, 14 days. And the reason why is because you know, Ethereum dropped to $900 and right now it's around, hovering around uh, $1,500. Um, you know, the proof of stake date is set to September 19th and that's, you know, in two months or so um, of, of, of now. And right now it's uh, July 20th. So there's still two months. I'm pretty sure the price of Ethereum is just going to be very stagnant or actually drop just because there's not a lot of things helping with the market. Um, you know, there's still things about, you know, the housing bubble, the, there's the war going on. Um, Elon Musk has sold, or I guess Tesla has sold their Bitcoin. So there's not a lot of things really um, supporting cryptocurrencies, um, especially with the market not doing so well. So yeah, and then financial reports are coming out soon for a lot of companies, especially the technology companies. So I don't really see the, a big sign of uh, support um, just in the markets in general, but I want to really go over, uh, you know, proof of stake of Ethereum because this is what I'm really looking forward to and um, I want to, you know, give my thoughts on it. So the reasons why, you know, proof of stake will come with improvements compared to proof of work. Um, what I'm going to say is better if it, energy efficiency. Now, what that means is that, you know, um, proof of stake is pretty much, you know, folks who stake their Ethereum coins instead of running, um, you know, the Ethereum miners, which are pretty much uh, those ants, ants miners or, um, you know, those uh, GPU mining rigs. So there's going to be a large transition from you know those physical um mining devices to you know uh virtual or um hardware components that don't require as much um you know resource and, and electricity and energy uh lower barrier to entry reduce hard requirements so this is kind of true just because you know you can either have your uh node validator which will do the 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 mining or the, the proof of stake, um, that would be done where you either do it through a virtual private cloud server, such as like Amazon, Digital Oceans, NetCup, um, any cloud service provider where you can, you know, um, do that. Or you can do like a uh, mini PC, such as like Intel Nuke, or, and I mean, people have done it also with like a Raspberry Pi or something very equivalent, but those uh, hardware devices, especially the physical ones, um, it can range depending on what you want to do. I mean, Raspberry Pis are pretty cheap um, to have everything there. You probably need like a hundred bucks or less. Um, the Intel Nuke or anything equivalent to that, um, any Asus, um, 
as well as like Dell and IBM. Those little mini computers are just like a size of like a half of a cube. Um, that will probably cost you maybe I would say like five hundred dollars to um, eight hundred dollars. Uh, really depends on the hardware resource requirements that you select. I think the biggest thing that you definitely need would be the uh, would be the RAM as well as the uh, the space. Um, the, the amount of space is really important just because um, the Ethereum blockchain is so large. Um, that's going to be probably one of the biggest things that you're going to need. Um, pretty sure you need like two terabytes would probably be the most recommended. Um, you can pretty much get away with maybe like 1.5. Well, one terabyte, you got to definitely prune it more often than usual. So that's just my advice. Um, reduce the centralized risk. Now, this means the proof of stake should leave more nodes secure in the network. Uh, yeah, I would say that's pretty much true. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of the um, proof of work mining rigs, you know, there are large collections of pooling mining rigs as well as these large organizations um, that have built these uh, supercomputers of mining rigs and just stacks and stacks of GPUs. Um, granted, they don't really have, you know, um, over 51% of the of the blockchain where they can do like a 51% attack, but, you know, they do have this portion. So transitioning over from proof of work to proof of stake definitely helps with this. Um, and you know it definitely reduces that risk and there's more security involved uh, because of the low energy requirements uh less if insurance is required to um incentivize participation yeah i definitely agree with that economic penalties for misbehavior to make 51 so this is a huge thing too because i don't think anyone who is a node validator would want to you know try anything fishy try anything um, wrong or try to scam because you know they're staking their ethereum uh, as a node validator and if something does happen whether they're not able to maintain their node validators or they're trying to you know perform a 51 percent attack or do something you know the they will be their rewards will be slashed and eventually you know if they do get blacklisted you know all all their ethereum will be removed um depending on how much you know they stake whether that's let's say like 32 which is the required amount to be a node validator or um, you know, with rocket pool, you can be like 16, 16, um, in order to have one mini pool. Um, so yeah, so that definitely is also here. The community can resort to social recovery on, of an honest chain. If a 51% uh, attack were to overcome, um, the crypto, uh, economic defenses. Um, I've also seen this in, uh, already real life, especially as a node validator, um, you know, within the discord communities. Uh, especially the Ethereum developers, especially like within Rocket Pool, they reach out to the to the node validators with the public addresses uh, of the node validators, being like, "Hey, just want to let you know that this person needs to update, um, you know, their their version, or this one is stalling, and you know, it may be it may impact." So there's definitely this uh, conscious uh, social conscious thing where they're trying to help make sure that every node validator is on the right track, not doing anything wrong, and things like that, and um, it's very unlikely there's going to be a collusion uh, with these node validators just because of their stake. Now, I think the biggest thing about, um, you know, the proof of stake is that it's definitely going to give the node validators um, more rewards because all of that um, is, would be no longer done or performed through the proof of work which, which uh, is for the miners. So you will get the rewards for the proof of stake as well as MEV. Um, a lot of that rewards will now go to the uh, miners, which is really um, a beneficial thing. Um, I think one of the things to also keep in mind with you know, the proof of stake is that it's not necessarily going to you know, change the game or um, you know, increase um, the efficiency of Ethereum. Um, it's just there to uh, to perform a a better transition uh, of what a future stake of Ethereum. 
Um, I really don't think I, I really don't want people to think that you know um, this is going to completely change Ethereum. Um, you know, Ethereum still has issues when it comes to its layer one. Um, you know, the block the block transitions per second, um, the gas prices, like all those things are still persistent uh, when it comes to um, Ethereum. Now, there's definitely going to be improvements to, for example, like proof of work, right? Um, or not proof of work, I'm sorry, later, layer two stuff, right? The layer two stuff will definitely help um, with that. So definitely, you know, make sure you do your research. Um, in addition to after the merge happens, right, with the beacon chain, there's actually two more upgrades that need to be performed um, that won't happen until much later. Uh, one is the um, Shanghai update, and the Shanghai update is very important because the Shanghai update allows the node validators to actually withdraw um, the rewards from the beacon chain, right? So that's currently no one can actually do at the moment. Um, and it's just how it is. Um, so when that happens, um, with that Shanghai update, the node validators are able to, you know, uh, stop the, stop their, um, you know, proof of stake, you know, also get the rewards back, uh, from the beacon chain after the merge. So that's set for a later date. Another thing, um, that's also very important after um, the proof of stake and, and also after the Shanghai update would be the uh, sharding. Now sharding is a uh, way to make Ethereum uh, more robust and more scalable. Um, you can look it up, uh, but sharding is pretty much allows, and I think the best analogy what they do it is like, you know, think of the Ethereum just being like a, a one lane road of just all the blockchains and you know only that only the uh i guess the transactions go through uh one way now with sharding is pretty much you open up multiple lanes uh, allowing um the transactions of blocks to uh move at in the same direction but now there's multiple lanes so it makes it more uh, efficient there's more transactions um, and it will definitely help reduce, you know, a lot of things such as, um, you know, speed, gas prices and things like that. So um, there's two upgrades that I'm also looking forward to, you know, it's not the end all be all. And then even like the stuff with layer two, there's a lot of potential um, with, um, with, yeah, what happens. So. Uh, let me see if I actually can find it when it comes to the... Here we go, yep. Yeah. Uh, relations between the upgrades, the merge, and the beacon chain. This is the Shanghai update, right? Uh, in order to simplify the maximum is focus on the successful transaction and proof of stake, the merge upgrade will not include certain anticipated features such as the ability to withdraw Ethereum, right? So that is something that's very important. After that, the merge and sharding. Sharding uh, merge the scalability. Uh, however, the boom of layer two scaling solutions, the party has shifted to swapping um, proof of work to proof of stake. So this is something that's definitely going to hit later on. It will definitely help um, with the layer twos. Plans for sharding are rapidly evolving, given the rise and success of layer twos to scale. Um, sharding plans have shifted to find more optimal ways um, to distribute the burden of storing compressed head. Cool. So um, based on that, it seems like you know, sharding will be uh, prevent much later just because of how awesome layer twos have. And I'm pretty sure they're gonna think of ways to maybe potentially do like interoperabilities, um, but no one's sure. But I do definitely wanna, you know, make sure you guys are aware of this, understand it, um, as well as why I'm being very hopeful. Now, uh, I will say me personally, um, I've decided to actually buy um, more um, Ethereum. Um, and this is not financial advice, um, but for me, what I'm doing right now is I am just doing a dollar cross average of Ethereum. So, um, you know, full, full transparency, like I am pretty much buying $20, um, a day worth of Ethereum. Now it's, it's not that much and I am very confident, you know, um, I will evaluate maybe every, uh, end of the week where should I should I invest in more or should I not? Um, I think right now is a really good time to buy 
uh, cryptocurrencies um, just because of um, you know how cheap it is compared to a couple of months ago now there's this huge mentality when it comes to uh, ethereum or any cryptocurrencies um, you want to buy when it's like doing really really well and it's high and people tend not to buy uh, when it's low um, I have a lot of people asking me like oh like is it a good time to buy they're not sure just because of they look at at it at a risk especially when it's low um, and they're not willing to gamble because of that and because of that risk um, however when it's you know when it's like full bear bull market and like you know like cryptocurrencies are like doubling in profits um, people don't wish to buy because they don't really understand that, you know, even buying a slither of a, uh, of amount or a fraction of, um, let's say like of one coin, um, you know, they think the price is too high. It's, it's not something that they can fathom where, you know, it, it's, it's too much of a risk or a gamble, even at that price, because it's like, oh, like it, it's too high and they can't stomach that. Um, so there's, there's people ways, um, I think right now it's a really really good time to buy uh, I, I will continue to buy more um, especially with ethereum um, ah, um, I think another thing you guys should be aware of and I, I mentioned the other video you know there's a few coins that are making a lot of tractions and grounds uh, one is polygon and the reason why polygon is doing so well is because um, they just been selected for the um, Disney Accelerator program, which I mentioned before, and they also just recently announced um, their ZK EVM, which pretty much allows uh, interoperability with other uh, cryptocurrency coins, functionalities, as in layer two solutions. So it's really awesome. Um, there's a lot of advantages now with Ethereum layer two stuff. Um, I'm pretty confident that the layer twos are just going to dominate um, as Ethereum grows, especially with the proof of stake. So uh, I'm I'm pretty bullish when it comes to Ethereum, um, and yeah, I'm pretty excited. Um, another thing I'm excited too for would be Polkadot. Um, I think Polkadot, um, you know, has that interoperability uh, with with Ethereum um, and, and is actually there to help um, support it uh, just because there's that interoperability. I'm um, also a big fan of like uh, Chainlink. Chainlink's probably going to do really well. I think both of those are very uh, undervalued. Um, pretty excited to see what happens there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so I hope you guys find this useful. I hope the uh, Ethereum merge part was very helpful in understanding. Um, I, I try to explain it. Um, more in like i don't know i guess like layman's terms to make it you know more more digestible um so i hope that was helpful for you guys um but yeah um i guess i will uh end it here i'll catch you guys in the next video juicy out